What is up guys, Charlie Pang is here. So today is day one of 10 days of t-shirt designs. If you guys missed my last video, I announced that I'm doing a little mini series. I'm gonna be creating one design per day for 10 days straight, starting today. This is day one, guys. So in today's episode, we're gonna be creating a really cool pocket design using Illustrator. This is a tutorial slash watch me design type video, so I'm not gonna go into full detail on everything because that will literally take way too long. That is not the purpose of this series. The series is all about watching me design and learning from how I design. A lot of people tell me you go too fast, you need to slow down, but the truth is, guys, you have to learn by watching people do. It's not all about every single instruction. If you focus on every little detail of everything, you're literally never gonna be a productive designer. You're never gonna get to the point you need to be to be a production designer, meaning making money doing designing. So you have to understand something. Watching me design is so much more valuable than watching me talk about every little speck of a design because that's not how you're gonna learn, guys. You have to learn by experimenting and practicing. That's how you're gonna learn. So I just wanna get that off my chest because a lot of people tell me I'm too fast or blah, 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 blah. But the truth is, you have to just learn by watching. That's how I learned. Nobody sat down with me telling me, hey, here's how you need to do everything, every single thing. I literally just watched and kept making mistakes until I got it right, and that's what you gotta do too. So anyway, with that being said, let's go ahead and start day one of 10 days of t-shirt designs. I'm excited, guys. Thank you for joining me. Let's create some sick stuff, guys. I'm gonna meet you in Illustrator. I'll see you there. Today we're gonna to be doing a text-based design and it's gonna say live like a legend and it's gonna have some other really cool stuff. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I know I wanna have some text kind of arcing on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the ellipse tool and I'm just gonna draw out a ellipse. And I don't want the ellipse to be too big and you'll see why. I don't want it to be too big and I'm just gonna use these bracket tools up here to center it. So now I have a circle. It doesn't matter what color it is because we're just gonna use this circle to make a text path. And if you don't know what a text path is, we're gonna be using the T tool here and we're gonna be typing around this path. And that's why we made it a circle because I want it to have a perfect arc. So anyway, now we're gonna go to the T tool here and I'm gonna go to type on path tool, which is right under here if it works properly. So there it is, type on a path tool. And once you have that, you'll see this little squiggly line go through the eye here. And you just hover over that top of this edge. You'll see the blue line, just hover over it and then click once. And it's gonna put some lorem ipsum text all around that work path. And that's how you know you've done the right thing. Now I'm gonna type in live like a and that's all for now. So I'm gonna raise the text size. So I just rose the font size up to 60 for now, and that might change. So now I need to choose a font, and I already know what font I, I wanna use because I've already done my research, so I'm gonna use something called Classic Regular. I put Live Like A because I'm gonna put Legend right under it, and you guys can probably see the structure I'm going for already. I'm really keeping this nice and clean. And there's one problem though, this isn't perfectly centered on top and I don't like that. So I'm gonna go to paragraph up here and go to align center. We're gonna go to our selection tool or you could just hit V on your keyboard, that will go to it as well. And I'm just gonna use these little brackets right here and use them to align it to the top. And I have my smart guides on. And if you don't know where those are, you can go to view and you can go to smart guides and make sure that's checked or you can just do control plus U and that will also enable them or disable them. So I already have mine, I already have my smart guides enabled so I'm using them to my advantage. Now I'm gonna take this little bracket down here uh, as well, it has like a little bracket and a square, and I'm gonna drag that up to center. So as you can see, I have it centered left and centered right right here, so it's basically splitting the circle in half, and now it's centered completely, and that's exactly what I wanted. Now I don't like the uh, font size, so I'm gonna go up a little bit more with it. I think we're gonna do like 65, um, or we can actually go less, we can go 62. We'll go 62 with this top font, and then that's it, we can leave it as is. Now we need to type out the center font, which is the easiest one because we don't have to add any warps to it. So we're just gonna go ahead and click once and then type out legend. Just like that. So legend, and I'm just gonna basically hold and shift and use the transform tool and resize it. Just like that, and that's way too big. Obviously we don't want it that big. We want it to be bigger than the top font, but we, we don't want it to be too big because it can really kill the design if it's if it's that uneven, but that looks fine the way it is. We might end up changing this. I think I'm gonna go 99 with this, actually. And that's good for now. We Like I said, we might end up changing that, who knows. Um, we'll go with the flow and see what happens. So live like a legend's already set in place and I'm gonna put clothing under here right away. So I duplicated it. And if you don't know how to duplicate something, you just select whatever you wanna duplicate, hold an alt and click and drag and then let go of both alt and the click and you'll duplicate it just like that. Leave some space in between just to give it um, a nice fill 
That way nothing's too close because if everything's too close to each other, what happens is you zoom out, you start to see muddiness. Like things start to look like they're blending together. So I always like to use a rule of thumb is, if I see it on a shirt from far away, can I read it still? And that's something you should probably consider when you're designing because um, things look different far away. So that's something to consider. Now the gap in between here and here is not too far off, so we're good for now, not a big deal. So now we have live like a legend clothing, and I love that, so it's looking really good. Next thing I wanna do is type out trademark. Trademark needs to be smaller than this, so we're gonna go ahead and resize it down here just to make sure it has, like I said, some contrast between fonts. We want the font sizes to be distinguishable. Um, we don't want everything to be the same font size because it's not as interesting that way, if that makes sense. I have trademark down here, and I also wanna put something up here, and I already know that, so I'm just gonna duplicate it, drag it up, and I'm gonna type out California, I believe. Yeah, so I'm gonna use California up here. That font size actually ended up working out pretty good. It's 26, but we're just gonna make it an even 26. Or actually, we'll do 25. We're gonna do 25 font size for the trademark and California. And I'm going to fill the space up here with something. I don't know yet. I think I, I'm gonna do a moon up here. And then down here, we're gonna add a box around this just to give it a little bit of a different feel. And like I said, you know, add some different elements to it to make things stand out more. So down here, I'm gonna go to a rounded rectangle and I'm just gonna draw out a rectangle. And as you guys can see, I'm working pretty fast, but that's all design is really. It's just experimenting with things. And that's why I'm not too concerned about teaching you guys everything because you guys will figure it out, trust me. It's, the more you design, you guys are gonna figure out some really cool stuff. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys come out with some really cool stuff on your own. So now I'm gonna resize this box a little bit. I don't like how big it is. Just like that, so now I got trademark. So I like the way this is looking. So I just drew out a rounded rectangle and I added a stroke and a inner fill of transparent. So I basically took the inner fill away and added a stroke of four. And my goal on the stroke on the outside is to kind of match it to the font stroke. I want it to look pretty consistent and it looks like it does, so we're good. Now I'm just gonna select all of it and group it, just like that. So I grouped it. Now we're looking pretty good, guys. So we can basically just kind of figure out where we want the placement. What I'm trying to do is copy the gaps in between here just to make sure all the gaps are at least semi-consistent. Uh, the more consistent a design is, the cleaner it, it, it will look and appear uh, to the eye, so that's something to consider as well. Now, up here I'm gonna add a moon and maybe some stars, so we're gonna go ahead and make a moon out of circles. So take an ellipse, and we're gonna need two of these. So we're gonna make one like an off color, like red, something nice and poppy, and we're gonna make the other one um, a different color black just so you can see what's happening here so we're gonna be using the pathfinder tool to take this black circle this black ellipse and delete it out of the red ellipse and it's really simple so we're gonna select both and we're gonna go up to here and just hit minus front so that black one was in front so what happened was it deleted it from the back one which is a red one and that's how you got a moon now so we just use two ellipses to create a shape and I do that all the time guys, it's super effective. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm not happy with the way this moon is because the moon is really sharp and the rest of my design is really round and I just have a big problem with that kind of stuff. So I want to add a stroke to it. I'm gonna click on the stroke menu here and I'm gonna make sure everything's rounded, just like that. So we're going to the cap, rounding it, and the corner rounding it in the stroke menu here. And I'm just gonna make the stroke like six because we're gonna resize it anyway. And that's actually looking good so now I can expand everything just like that, and I'm gonna fill it all black. See, now I have a perfect rounded moon that looks beautiful, and that's all we have to do. So now I'm gonna resize it and put it in place. Super stoked with the way it's turning out so far. So I have the moon, I just centered it, and now I'm gonna add some stars right here. So we're gonna create a star from scratch. So I'm just gonna take my pen tool and kind of roughly draw like a diamond shape kind of adding an arc to it. There's no easy way to use the pen tool, guys. It takes practice to use it, so um, I just encourage you guys to really take your time and learn it. It's it's a great tool, but it, it does take some uh, practice. It's a learning curve for sure. That is good. I don't like the bottom part here. I'm just gonna go ahead and take my eraser and just delete some of the bottom part, basically erase the bottom part. Um, this is gonna be rounded, so I'm not too concerned about it being too perfect, because I don't even care about be everything being perfect anyway. I think things look better when they're not perfect. So anyway, now we have this diamond shape, and I'm gonna go ahead and merge both of those by using Unite on the Pathfinder tool. You guys can see that I'm using the Pathfinder tool a lot, and I do that with all my designs. The Pathfinder tool is like a necessity, you need it. So just like we did with the moon, we're gonna round these edges by adding a stroke. Okay, so we're gonna go to six stroke, again, just to stay consistent. And that's what it looks like right here. And it looks pretty ugly so far, right? But that's okay. We're gonna go to the cap here and just round both of them. 
All right, so now we have our twinkle star or whatever we're gonna call it, our star. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand it and then we're gonna merge it all together, just like that. So now we have a perfect star and now we're gonna just resize it just like we did the moon and put it in place. So that moon can actually be bigger. So I made the moon bigger and I'm gonna make this one star a little bit bigger as well. And I'm gonna center them together. So I'm gonna take these both, by selecting both, I'm gonna use the align to selection tool here. At the very top, you just go to this drop down menu. You can either align it to artboard, align to key object, or selection. We're gonna align it to selection. So we want both of these to be aligned with each other, and now they are. And now we're gonna duplicate it one more time and resize this star to give it a size difference, make it more interesting, just like that. So that's pretty cool. Now I have the star right here on the right and the star on the left and they're they're doing something interesting they're working together to create more of a interesting object besides just putting a star next to it and leaving it where we added another one to give it some perspective i guess you could say it gives it some depth because this one looks like it's further away and that's great so now we can select all these i'm going to zoom in on my design a little bit so i can select them easier so just like that and i'm going to group them and then i'm going to realign them to my canvas just to make sure everything's nice and centered so now we have our little moon and we have our stars but now i want to add something else i always add the year i'm born to all my designs it's kind of my trademark so i'm going to type out 19 and then 91 after that. So I'm gonna duplicate this so there's the same font size. So I just typed out 1991 and now I'm just gonna drag it in place. So I want this one right here, somewhere right there, and I want this one right here, just like so. And then that's it. So I'm gonna select both of them and just make sure they're centered real quick. So they're both aligned with each other, but now I want to make sure they're centered completely. So I'm gonna go to uh, align to artboard and then center that one more time. And that's basically it. And I can even do it to the legend text as well, just to make sure everything's aligned with each other perfectly. And now it's aligned with each other perfectly. So that's all I had to do. So basically I aligned these together first and then I aligned it to center it with the canvas and then I aligned it to center um, perfectly with the legend and now it's perfect. So it's definitely helpful to use all the tools Illustrator gives you with guides and smart guides and all that because it really helps you align things without having to do much work. So anyway, everything looks good now. So now our design's actually done. So I'm actually really happy with this and now I wanna go on to color it. So we're gonna select our whole design and we're just gonna do Control Shift O and that's gonna outline all the fonts. And basically when you go to send this design off to get printed, they're gonna ask you if your fonts are outlined um, or any of your type is outlined and if it's not you're gonna have to do that for them or they'll do it for you whatever but most of the time they're gonna ask you for that so that's why I outline it it's just a good practice to get into so that's only after I'm done with the design and usually before I outline something I'll duplicate it once on a different artboard just so I have it kind of uh, safe somewhere you know because if let's say you mess up or something and you want to go back you want to have a backup okay with a backup that's not all outlined or expanded or anything like that what I want to do is I want to make live like a legend clothing the same color and then make everything else a different color to add some contrast so we're gonna go ahead and ungroup everything real quick and I'm just gonna select the text that I want the same color so we're gonna select this text this text and this text so live like a legend clothing and we're gonna make this an off black just like so. So now it's an off black. Now we're gonna select everything else that's not the ones that we just selected. So we're gonna select California, the moon, 1991, and trademark, and we're gonna make that a gray color. It's gonna look really cool, watch. So we're gonna make that a gray color, just like so. So everything is gray now that we want in gray, but we have a problem. The trademark box at the bottom is basically gray as well and it has a black stroke and we don't want that we want the stroke to be gray and the text inside to be gray i'm going to make a easy fix for this i'm just going to basically change the fill to no fill and we're going to add this stroke color here so i'm going to select something that's the color i want and i'm going to add this color by dragging it to my swatches and that's it so now i have that color in my swatches and now i'm just going to change that stroke to that color that I just added and that's it. So that was day one of 10 days of t-shirt designs and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed it a lot and it was just super fun creating this awesome legend design. And if you guys really enjoyed this video, let me know in the comment section below, hit that thumbs up button and then most importantly, the most important thing you can do is subscribe if you haven't already because it supports my channel and also hit that little freaking bell button next to the subscribe button because that's how you know when I upload videos so you can keep track of the rest of the days. We still have nine days left guys of designing so this is going to be crazy epic and it's just going to be some big adventure that we're going on together but anyway i hope you guys learned something today i will see you guys in day two of 10 days of t-shirt designs 
I have a friend by the name of Jacob Topping and he wrote a great book all about print on demand and it has a bunch of awesome stuff in it and it basically gives you all these different shortcuts to kicking ass on um, print on demand type sites. So anyway, I'm gonna link that in the description below for you guys to get it if you wanna pick it up. It's totally worth the $59. With the amount of information the book comes with, you can literally make enough sales to pay for the book in weeks. So he is giving me an affiliate link, so I do get paid every time somebody buys a book, but I want you guys to know that I actually really do love the information in this book and I think it's really important for people to know. Maybe he's not the world's expert in print on demand, but he does know a lot and he's a super smart guy, so I do believe in his product. So like I said, if you guys wanna buy the book, the links in the description below and I would totally buy it. it's totally worth the money guys but anyway I'll see you guys next time <laughs>